going to, sir. Mr. Kennedy? Yes, sir. Have you an apartment? He's expecting me. Uh, what name shall I say? Anderson. Will you wait in here, please? Anderson, please. Mr. Anderson, please. Mr. Kennedy will see you now. I was told to come and see you. Yes, Mr. Anderson. Won't you take your coat off? Thank you. Dr. Bruckner. Tell me, what's to happen? Where am I going? I don't know. To Germany? I don't know. I'd like to go to South America. Is that possible? You can change in my watch room. You'll find a shirt and everything you need in there. Leave all your own clothes here. You'll find money in the pocket of that suit. Now, at 6.30 this evening, go to 142 Belgrave Square. Mr. William Lucas is expecting you. When you're ready, you can leave by the other door. Thank you. Mr. Lucas is expecting me. Good evening. Come and join the party. What's your racket? I beg your pardon? Come on, confess. We're all crooks these days. <laughs> Something dark and sinister. Well, what's going to win the derby? Are you going to Epsom this year? No, I'm not going to Epsom. Oh, going away? Yes, I want to. Where to? I'm not sure yet. Out of England, I hope. <laughs> On business, naturally. Mr. Anderson? I'm so glad you could get along. There's somebody here who especially wants to meet you. Thanks, I shall be very pleased. I'll take you to him. Will you excuse me if I drag him away? Of course. Please excuse me. This way. Professor. Excuse me. Professor, this is Mr. Anderson. Professor Inman is a very clever psychoanalyst. He knows everybody's secrets. I've heard a great deal about you, Mr. Anderson, and your work in the past. I'm much more interested now in the future. Yes, I can understand. I have a lot of problems. Perhaps being a psychoanalyst, you can help me. Yes. Come and have dinner with me tonight. I shall look forward to it. We have made mistakes, Dr. Bruckner. But while there's life in us, we shall fight on. And the web of the future is bacteria. Is there anyone still working on immunization? Yes, many are working. When we have discovered the method to immunize our own people against the diseases we shall use, we shall be armed. But now you are free too, Dr. Bruckner. And you will continue to work so far as possible where you left off. Where? Not in Germany. Where everyone is suspect, everything is watched. Here, Dr. Bruckner. In England? Yes. You were lucky. You have learned to speak the language when you were young. You have no accent. You can work here without questions or interference. We wouldn't have taken this trouble otherwise. How can I work here in England? You have a chance. It could succeed, you know. But that's up to you. If you haven't the courage to take it, they will find you anyhow sooner or later. And hang you. Yes. What's this chance you talk about? This morning, a Dr. Richard Forrester has arrived in London from Australia. He has been appointed bacteriologist to the medical research station at Gillington near Oxford. He is staying tonight at the Tivoli Hotel, room 313. Is he Australian? No, English. He has lived there about 15 years, working at a hospital in Melbourne. Hasn't he any family or friends here? Oh, as far as we know, he has no relations in England. But he may have friends. That is for you to find out, Dr. Bruckner. 
Here in this bottle is some phenol. By injection with a needle, death is almost instantaneous. We have tested it many times. Is this all the help I get? No. Here's a capsule. If you break it in your teeth, you will die within a few seconds. If anything goes wrong, you will use it. Well, Dr. Bruckner? It was so late. What can I do for you? You don't know me. My name's Anderson, bacteriologist, Leeds University. I'm staying at this hotel. I'd heard you'd arrived and wanted to call in on you before you left London. That's very kind of you. Please, come in. Thank you. How was the journey? I enjoyed it. I needed a rest. I hope you don't think it odd calling in on you like this. I'm used to Australians. They do that sort of thing. No standing on form. That's what I came to see you about, Australia. I want to go there myself. I'm a bit tired of this country. Well, of course, after 15 years, I'm glad to be home. What about your family? I haven't a family. But you've lots of friends here? Sure, when I can find them. Well, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks, no. I'd rather stand, if you don't mind. I've been sitting in a train most of the day. Smoke? No, thanks. Well? What do you want to know about Australia? You like Melbourne? Very much. I hope you like Gillington. I must congratulate you. It's a good appointment. Thank you. When are you due? I'm going tomorrow. Morning? Oh, right about noon. I hope they fixed you up with good accommodation. It's not easy these days. Ah, I'm lucky. There's a furnished house goes with the job. Uh, and a cook housekeeper. That makes things much simpler. Do you know any of the staff at Gillington? No, not yet. Do you? Not personally. If you don't mind my asking, who told you I was staying here? Mind my turning this on? Or do you object to this sort of music? Not in the least. But must we have it so loud? I'm afraid we must. What do you want? You ordered a skin ginger ale, sir. Will you sign, sir? No, I'll pay. Four and six, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Shall I take it into the room? No, sir? thanks. That's all I want. Will there be anything else, sir? Nothing else. Very good, sir. Good night.
Will you please have my bill ready? Room 313. Yes, leaving now. Thank you. One moment. Your luggage, sir? Yes, it's all ready. Yes. Never load a trunk this heavy from what you buy in the English shop, sir. I don't suppose you would. No, I'll carry that myself. Very good, sir. I shall want a taxi. I'll get you one downstairs, sir. I'll see you at the entrance, sir. Where are you going? We're taking the service lift, sir. Going down, sir. Room 313. What name, please? Forrester. Dr. Richard Forrester. Will you wait a minute? I'm in rather a hurry. What room number? 313. Taxi! Taxi! German prisoners was helped from outside. Do you believe it? Oh, I don't know. Well, one of them was Bruckner. He was awaiting trial at Nuremberg. Bruckner? If you must remember, the German doctor, the so-called scientist, the beast of Ravensbrück. He used human beings as guinea pigs in a concentration camp. Yes, I remember now. I don't think I ever read a more horrible case to inject women and children with plague and other foul diseases and then to watch them die. I suppose you must have had some end in view. Yes, bacterial warfare. Any man who dabbles in that sort of thing commits a crime against humanity. What about the atomic bomb? What's the difference between any weapons and total war? Yes, I suppose you're right. Oh, it's war that's inhuman. Well, speaking as a human person, I've always found that faith can accomplish as much, if not more, than forensic medicine. Well, I'll back drainage against dogma and penicillin against prayer any day of the week, including Sunday. Well, let's say penicillin and prayer. Ah, oh, here's Givington. Well, we're agreed upon that. Well, as we're going to be neighbors, I'd better introduce myself. My name's Leighton. Mine's Forrester. Well, I'm doing welfare work at the POW camp here. I hope to see you sometime. Thank you. Good luck to you in your new work. <laughs> Those are mine. Yes, sir. And there's a golf bag. That's it.
That must be him, Fred. Dr. Forrester? Yes? I'm Rankin, your assistant. How do you do? I see you're a golfer. That's wonderful. Yes, a wonderfully bad one. <laughs> well, I have a taxi here for your luggage. I'll drive you up to the house in my own car. No, I'll... Uh... All right. I'll come with you, thank you. Take that end. I'll give you a hand. No, I don't want it up there. Downstairs in the laboratory. I shall need down here. Sorry I shouted at you. Oh, that's all right. Thank you, Henry. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope this is adequate. Dr. Carter, your predecessor, had it fitted up for his own private work. Yes, that's what I intend to use it for, too. What's through there? That's all. That's the old wash house. Never used now. I shall want a few things changing. Well, I dare say we can arrange all that. You say you're living in the house? Yes, but that was purely a private arrangement between Dr. Carter and myself. If you prefer, I'll move out. We'll see how it works. But don't expect any social companionship. I shall be working most nights, sometimes very late. What, overtime? Oh, that's bad. That's very bad. Well, surely not tonight. Yes, Dr. Rankin? Even tonight. And perhaps you won't mind if I keep a date at the club. There's a special session on tonight. I may be pretty late. Not in the least. Sure? Quite.
home early, Rankin. Oh, hello. I thought you were gonna be late tonight. Well, after all, if this is your first evening here, I, I scrounged a bottle of scotch. Thought you might like a drink and a chat. Thank you, but as I told you this morning, I have a lot of things to do. I thought you were pulling my leg. Go on, have a drink. Dr. Rankin, I think I'd better make it quite clear that I'm not in the habit of pulling people's legs, particularly the legs of my assistants. But it's apt to lead to misunderstandings. And life's too short for that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's no offense. You sure you want to have a drink? No, thank you. By the way, uh, I have an invitation for you. They want me to bring you over to the club and introduce you. The club? The golf club. You know, bridge, poker, a drink any evening. Of course, you can get a game any time you like. Thank you, but I hardly play. <laughs> you can't tell me you brought that set of golf clubs all the way from Australia for nothing. No, Dr. Rankin. Good night. Good night. Oh, the so-called laboratory here. It's filthy. It'll have to be cleaned from top to bottom. Well, I can't understand that. Mrs. Plum spent the whole of yesterday turning it out and scrubbing it. It's still not clean by my standards. And I want some alterations. There's not enough light. Will you please have an electrician here tomorrow? Very well. Good night. Good night. I hope you sleep well. Would you like the key, Dr. Rankin? Go on. Open it up and have a good look. Perhaps you'd like to read my diary and my private letters. I came down to look at the lights. You were complaining about them. I'm sorry if I appear to be poking my nose into your private things. I apologize. In future, if I ever require you down here, I shall send for you. Good night. I'd like you to get me some Polisol. Polisol? We haven't used it for years. I want it. We haven't any, I'm sorry. Then find some. There's Ronsasol, made by Day and Walker. It's almost identical. I can get you that. Dr. Rankin, you've been my assistant now for several weeks. You should have learnt by now that I won't be put off with substitutes. I've always used Polisol. I've used it quite recently. Must be obtainable. Get some. Right. I'll try this afternoon. Thank you. I think I found a vaccine against the common cold. What? Say that again. Come and watch. I want you to know all about it. First, I took some washings from the throats of people who just started with a common cold. Filtered the washings. Then, inoculated the filtrate into eggs. 
Like this. Doesn't it kill the chicks? Apparently not. Anyway, in 10 cases out of 12, it hasn't. After inoculation, I've incubated the eggs, and the chicks have hatched out. Then, after three or four days, I've infected them with common cold germs. And so far, they've all been immune. In the next stage, the human body. To test the vaccine on volunteers. First, to infect them with colds from the infected egg. Your coffee's ready, Dr. Forrester. Thank you, sister. For the life of me, I can't make that man out. Who? Dr. Forrester? Aye, Forrester. As I was coming in this morning, he caught me. The back seat of my car was cluttered up with fishing tackle. Well, I saw him giving it one of yon disapproving looks of his. So I told him I'd been up all night at a confinement. Oh, how did you get on, said he? A couple of brace of three pounders, says I. What, quadruple bus, says he. Quadruple is my foot, I said. Trout, man, of course, <laughs> trout. Well, then he looked at you as if you were nuts and walked off. Aye, that's it. Has the man no humor in him? Not for your low comedy, Mac. But he's still first class at his own job. Morning. Oh, Dr. Forrester. Morning. 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 This telegram's just arrived for you. Thank you. The quads are doing fine, Forrester. I beg your pardon? The quadruplets. Here, I'll tell you what. Come over to my place and dine, and we'll fry them in butter. If you don't mind a spot of cannibalism, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, eh? You'll come. Thank you for your invitation, Dr. McKechnie. I shall be delighted. But some other time, perhaps. Tomorrow, I shall not be here. I want you to keep a special eye on the common cold cultures. See there's enough broth. And watch the incubator. Some of the chicks should hatch today. Yes, all right. Excuse me, sir. Will you be back for dinner? Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Do you mind if I clear Dr. Rankin? No, go ahead. Excuse me asking you, sir. But what's he carrying on with down there? I have no idea, Mrs. Plum. I never go down. Oh, not that I'd set foot in at any price. Not with all them horrible rats. Rats? Yes, rats. Can you believe it? I save boxes and boxes of them and feeding them off food that comes off points. Lovely irons, all matched. Now, Dr. Carter, he was a proper gentleman, he was. But this one. Always complaining, nothing's good enough. Dr. Forrester is a very clever man, Mrs. Plum. And clever men are sometimes difficult. Difficult? Ever since he's been in this house, it's the same. Doesn't like this, doesn't like that. Must do this, mustn't do that. Glory be. It's funny. He said he couldn't play for toffee. If there isn't a cut on one of them. They've been used a good many times. St. Cat's Golf Club. R. Forrester. Strokes received none. Five, four, three, four. That's fair enough. Handicap scratch. The man's a tiger. That's what I mean. But not what I mean, Mrs. Plum. I mean he's quite the golfer. All right, have it your own way. you say? 428. Thank you. No, I don't want to speak. Just want to send something. Thank you.
Tracy Hart? Yes. Were you expecting Dr. Forrester? No. No, I thought I was to... Hello, Dr. Forrester. Dr. Forrester, please come in. It's very nice of you to call on me. How was the journey? Oh, a bit cramped, but I didn't mind. I enjoyed it. Well, you don't seem to recognize me. Well, uh, frankly, I thought I would. But, uh... You didn't. Well, it's rather a long time to remember. I was only about this high. I don't work it out. Fifteen years. As long as that? Afraid so. Oh, by the way, I've got a letter for you from my father. It's in my luggage. Good. Uh, how is he? He's fine. So is Mother. They send all sorts of messages, and of course they love to you. I expect you have other messages. I mean, for other friends over here. Oh, yes, but not important ones. <laughs> well, you're here at last. Had you made any arrangements tonight? Planned to see anyone? No, I was going to see a film and then dine downstairs. The letter from your father, you say it's in your luggage? Yes, it's in my trunk. Would you like to see it? No, now? it doesn't matter. Have you cabled them to say you've arrived safely? No, not yet. Never mind. Uh, I'll do that for you from Gillington. Do you mind? I want to hear the news. It'll be coming on soon. Of course not. Had tea? No, not yet. Perhaps you've ordered some from the waiter. Or a drink or something. No, no, I haven't. I know how stupid of me. You'd like a drink. I'll turn down. No, thanks. I don't want one. It's no good. Daddy gave the game away. <laughs> he said you loved a drink, especially whiskey and ginger ale. I said I don't want a drink. It's a bit early. Then later, perhaps. Yes, later. It was nice of you all the same. Oh, I mustn't forget. I got some presents for you. Presents? Oh, just some little things we thought you might like. Well, that was very kind of you. Well, not really. We're so grateful. I am, especially. What's there to be grateful for? Everything. As I told you when I wrote to Melbourne, I want to make this my career. When you said I could come over and work with you, I was... Oh, do you mind if I turn the wireless down a bit? Leave it! Go on. What are you going to say? I was only trying to thank you for letting me work for you. I, I know I can't give any real help to you yet, but I promise to do my best. Daddy told me how busy you'll be and how much your work meant. I don't, I'll do anything you say, anything you want me to do. I work hard, any hours. I'm sure you'll soon find you can rely on me and trust me. Yes. I could do all the cleaning, routine checks, stores, anything you say. I'll take you to Gillington tonight. Get ready. I'll be back for you in an hour. Oh, thank you. I'll be ready. The cabin, but I was lucky. <laughs> she didn't snore. <laughs> Did you come by Panama or Suez? Panama. Did Miss Colombo? I have a brother out there. I've always wanted to go to Ceylon. You know Colombo, don't you, Dr. Forrester? What? You've been to Ceylon? No. Will you excuse me? Make yourself at home. Dr. Rankin will see you around. Thank you. Do you mind if I ask a leading question? Well, do I have to answer it? No. <laughs> Go ahead, then. Well, exactly what are you? Private secretary, private assistant, private girlfriend, or... are you moving into my job at the station? Good heavens, no. Good heavens, no which? Good heavens, no all. Well, most of all, please don't think I'm competing for your job, because that'd be absurd. I couldn't. But you must know something about chemistry and bacteriology. Very little, by your standards. How much? Tell me. I don't think it'll impress you. Go on, don't be so modest. Well, during the war, I was nursing. Then I became a sort of junior assistant to bacteriologist in Christchurch who was working on plant diseases. Mm -hmm. I got very interested. So then I studied biology at the university, and later I got my degree. Good. Well, how'd you get over here? My father heard of Dr. Forrester's appointment at Gillington and wrote to ask if he'd take me as a sort of pupil assistant. You see, Daddy and Dr. Forrester were very old friends. Out there, of course. No, no, in England, years ago. You see, Daddy was a doctor, too. They were both in the same hospital. And then my father got an opportunity to go to Christchurch and took Mommy and me to live there. What about Forrester? 
Well, he heard how much Daddy liked it out there, and when he got the opportunity to go to Melbourne as a bacteriologist, he accepted. Did you see much of him? Well, my father saw him once or twice, but, uh, oh, well, you know, it's a long way from Christchurch to Melbourne. Mm. Well, I'm glad you've come. This house needed a bit of someone like you. Thank you, kind sir. But I never expected to be staying here. Why not? Oh, well, naturally, I thought I'd be living in rooms. I'm very grateful to Dr. Forrester. Miss Hart. Yes, Dr. Forrester. Will you please come down? Oh, yes, Dr. Forrester. Oh, will you excuse me a minute? Certainly. You know, you're highly honored being invited down to the Holy of Holies. It's out of bounds to me. Mind if I clear, sir? I never mind if you clear, Mrs. P. What does all this mean, sir? That's what I want to know. Dr. Carter would have had a stroke. What does what mean? There's something peculiar going on. I can feel it in my bones. Your bones have got far too much imagination, Mrs. P. Well, what would you think? Bringing a young girl into the house without so much as a moment's notice, coming home two hours late for dinner, cool as you like, no explanation, and then announcing she'll sleep in the next room to him. Now, take it easy. Where else could she sleep? Anyway, he's old enough to be your father. That's just it. The older they are, the worse they get. You wait. You'll find out. This is a culture of plague. Black death? No, black death was a bubonic plague. Then there's pneumonic plague. But a vaccine has recently been found for that. This is a variety of plague which will attack through the heart. The cardiac plague. The most deadly of all. German scientists were experimenting and planning to mass produce it artificially. Were they successful? I don't know. You look. Oh, yes. Only two microns long. Know how much a micron measures? Thousandth part of a millimeter. That's right. Now, this is how they're mass produced. Roughly once an hour, these little fellows divide themselves. So in only 24 hours under the right conditions, you'd have 10 million. Put end to end, they'd measure about 37 yards. And still they wouldn't be heavy enough to be weighed. In a relatively short time, you can cultivate artificially thousands of tons. But, um, well, surely there are antidotes. Of course there are natural antidotes. Food, temperature, congestion of waste matter. But they could be mass produced. Any defeated or weak nation could sap the strength of a greater nation. But I... I can't believe that It's they're... the next war. Undeclared and in the dark. The microbe, the invisible weapon. Suddenly the greater nation would find itself in the grip of a series of epidemics. Perhaps the first victims would be livestock and crops. Later, human beings. Human beings. Children. Deliberately infected with plague. Yes, but the infection would be far surer and far more deadly than ever before. How? Experiment has shown that bacteria can now be given extra staying and spreading power by dissemination through artificial mist. That means you only have to breathe the tiny droplets to catch it. But I can't believe that anyone could be so... Can't you? Look at this. This is an aerosol bomb. If the end of this were broken off in a crowded place, 80% of the people within 100 yards would be infected, and most would die. They wouldn't see the germs, smell them, or taste them. But about three days later, the first symptoms of the disease would show. Isn't there any defense against bacterial attack? That's what I'm working on. The defense is immunization. And I'm specializing entirely on the discovery of a vaccine against the cardiac plague. And you're helping me. This is the most important work imaginable. It is. How much progress has already been made? A great deal. I'll show you. The dead ones mean failure. They were injected with a vaccine, but it was ineffectual. Some of the live ones seem to be immunized. That alone is a step forward. But the final test will have to be made on the human body. Yes, I understand. Now I must ask something of you. Yes? I want you to swear on oath that you'll never betray to anyone, no matter who, the nature of our work in this laboratory. I swear. Get some. Oh. Good evening, Dr. Rankin. 
You look as though you're really enjoying yourself. Do you know Miss Hart, Mrs. Coles? How, How do you do, do Miss Hart? No, we haven't met before. Are you just up for the golf dance with Dr. Rankin? No, I'm living here. Oh, are you? How nice now. Will you excuse me? I'll get some cigarettes. That's very kind of you, Dr. Rankin. Let's sit down. Now, you must tell me all about yourself. Well, uh, this is a lovely part of the country, don't you think? Yes, it is lovely. You know, I've travelled all over the globe, but I always come back to my little nest in Oxford. Whereabouts are you living? At Gillington. With friends? Yes, I'm staying with Dr. Forrester. Dr. Forrester? Forrester? Oh, he hasn't been here long either. He's a new bacteriologist at the research station. Fancy. I knew a Dr. Forrester when I lived in Australia, in Melbourne. Dr. Richard Forrester. He is Dr. Richard Forrester. And he's lived in Melbourne for years. Well, I never. It must be the same. He was a bacteriologist. Bug men, I always call them. My, now isn't the world small? I must tell him he's here this evening. He'll be awfully pleased. Yes, do. I'm dying to meet him again. When are you coming to look around the camp? To be frank, I'm not very keen. I've seen too many. Well, Gillington's more interesting than most. It's for tough cases and for prisoners who've escaped. Yes, so I understand. And by the way, you remember we were discussing Bruckner in the train? Yes. He's still free. Where do they think he is? No idea, but they found all the others. Haven't they any clues about Bruckner? Oh, they will find him. Do you know Colonel Ingram, Dr. Forrester? How do you do? And Colonel Ingram is the commandant of the camp. Oh? Dr. Forrester is a scientist, rabid scientist. He knew Bruckner's work. Did you ever know him personally? Yes. Do you mean you actually knew him? Yes, but it seems a very long time ago. Whiskey and ginger ale for you, sir. And here's your very good health. Oh, and here's a toast. To that bunny wheel I see yours for us, sir. She makes me feel a good ten years younger, and a man's as young as he feels. So you can take that as you like. That's your daughter, Forrester. Gosh, no, if he'd a daughter as bunny as that, she wouldn't have been working as his assistant. <laughs> Let's join in. That's a mighty fine idea. Come on, Forrester, lead the way. Oh, please, I'd rather not. Lend a hand, Colonel. Well, no take no for an answer. It's your duty, man. Come on. Yourself? Very much. Oh, I've just met someone from Melbourne who knows you. Oh? Who? Oh, Mrs. Coates. She's very anxious to see you again. Do you remember her? Ought I to? She remembers you very well. Where is she? I am... Um, can't see her at the moment. Good night, Parker. No, not yet. Yes, I'd rather. I always think the Paul Jones is such fun, don't you? Well, it depends. Take you and me, for instance. We might never have met if it hadn't been for the Paul Jones. What? That's how I met my husband. Really? He passed on, poor darling, 12 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you tried the apricot jelly? No. You must. It's delicious. Excuse me, sir. You want it on the phone? I won't do that. All right. You dance divinely. I could dance all the evening with you. Thank you. The pleasure's entirely mine. Uh, where should we sit? Well, the truth is, I have an early appointment in the morning, and I thought of oh, going... nonsense. You can't run away like that. Besides, I mustn't be left until the music starts again. I'm not as young as I was. Uh, do you live near Gillington, Mr... Um... Yes, quite close. I suppose you're a member here. No, no, I'm not a member. I don't understand. If you live in Gillington, why we've never met before. Well, I haven't been here very long. <laughs> I know you think me awfully inquisitive, but is your work in Gillington or Oxford? Would you care for a cigarette? Oh, thank you. I'd love one. Come on, let's go out and get some air. Well, I ought... Oh, come on. I really ought to find Dr. Forrester. I think he'd like to talk to Mrs. Coles. What? 
Dr. Forrester, Mrs. Coles. Oh, that's a very good idea. Oh, look, there they are together. He's recognized her after all. Well, that lets us out. Let's go while the going is good. All right. I haven't yet. Would you excuse me now? Oh, of course. I hope we shall meet again, Mr. Uh... I hope so very much. Good night. Good night. Uh, not just now. Mac, I need your help. Well, have a drink first. I've just had a message from the camp. There's trouble. Another of those kangaroo trials. With many of my fortune, I lose. One of the prisoners has been beaten up, badly injured. Too bad. Only one. Our own doctor's in town for the evening. I've got it, and you want me. Is that the idea? Yes. All right, if I must. But... Never mind. Stay where you are. On second thoughts, I think I can manage. Oh, you won't offend me. Thanks all the same. Don't mention it. Thank your better judgment, sir. Please ask Dr. Rankin to tell Miss Hart that I'm leaving, and I'll wait for her in the car. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Dr. Forrester, I'm sorry to have to ask a favor, but there's been an injury at the camp. I must find a doctor. I haven't been in general practice for years. I it's only a question of a temporary dressing. Our own doctor will be back in an hour or so. I'd rather not, I'm sorry. Surely, Forrester, once a doctor... Any complications and I'd be responsible. No, you're wrong. Entirely my responsibility. Will you come? All right. Good. My cap. Are you staying? Yes. Would you mind telling Miss Hart that I'm leaving? And that I'd like her to ask Dr. Rankin to drive her home right away? Well, so soon, the girl's enjoying herself. I'll keep my eye on her for you. I'd rather she came home now, if you don't mind telling her. That's fine. Why do you have to make such a terrific mystery about your work with Forrester? What goes on? Top secret. Now, you said you wouldn't talk shop. What's wrong with talking shop? We're both in the same trade. I want to know what you're up to all day. Let's go down. It's getting cold. We're changing the subject. I didn't open it. Why will you never discuss your work? Please answer me that. Because Dr. Forrester doesn't like having his work discussed. Why not? Is he ashamed of it? On the contrary. Oh, I see. Just modest. Oh, don't be childish. Look, what is this thing you have for Forrester? You seem to think he's something out of this world. Well, come clean. Are you in love with him? You're <laughs> silly. And you don't act as if you're not. Is it someone else? In New Zealand, maybe. <laughs> well, are you in love or aren't you? Yes. Maybe. Who with? My job. Does that shock you? Heaven save me. A career girl. A lady chemist. I know what's coming next. A woman's place is in the home. So it is, too. Looking after a man. That's the only job for a lovely woman. <laughs> Cooking, cleaning, queuing, washing, mending, and having babies in your spare time. No help, but always a bright little smile for the breadwinner when he comes rolling home from the pub two hours late for dinner. Sure. It's the only job that satisfies any sensible woman. Yes, so men always say. That's well, true, isn't it? Yes. Perhaps. You are sweet. Why? Because I let you win the argument. No, you're just... just sweet. I better give him something to quieten him down. Mm. Got a hypodermic and some morphine. Oh. Yeah. Right, fill it, half a grain. Yeah, well... Speak English? Yes, sir. Well, pull yourself together. I told them the truth. Go on. Get it off your chest. What did you tell them? They lie. Even for themselves. They make believe that another Hitler will come. Der Tag. <laughs> I lost all I had. Even my wife. I spat. I told them. Hitler made savages of the German people. Sla Give me the syringe. Fetch some more hot water. Jawohl. How's he getting on? He's gone. Brain injury. Well, one bad German less.
Has Miss Hart arrived? No. Oh, she hasn't. No. And I want to give notice. I wish to leave first thing in the morning. Leave? Why? I've managed this house for ten years now. But if you think you can get it better managed, you're welcome, Dr. Forrester. What's the trouble? That foreign woman you applied for in there. Been here since eight o'clock. Foreign woman? Yes. Foreign woman from the labor exchange that you applied for. Well, all right. Let her get on with it. But not while I'm here. I'm particular. I think we'd better settle this in the morning. We'll settle this here and now. If she stays, I go. Good night, Dr. Forrester. Good night, Dr. Bruckner. Who are you? I'm Martha Lert. I've got a letter for you from Professor Ingman. Please sit down. All right. You will sleep in this house. Officially, you will be my maid. How are you progressing, Dr. Bruckner? How much time have I? And what about the police? Where are they searching for me now? They think you have escaped from England. We've been looking for you in Paris, Switzerland, even in Portugal. And what arrangements are being made for me? Everything has been arranged. And ever you're ready, you'll be flown to Spain. From Spain, you'll be taken to South America. Good. I may be ready soon. We would like to know how far have you progressed, Dr. Bruckner. Please, tell me. I found a vaccine. It will immunize rodents. It still has to be tested on the human body. You've got a, a patient? Yes. That's good. Engine trouble, Dr. Rankin? It's the um, night air. It um, blocks the carburetor. I know. But it's getting terribly late. Good, that's what I like. But what about Dr. Forrester? Well, who does he think he is? Well, he's my boss. Not tonight, he's not. All oh, right. But will you please drive me home? No. Oh. Do you really want to go home? No. But I think we're better just the same. All right, if you insist. Start the engine. I am um, not awfully good at engines. Tracy's late, it's not her fault. She wanted to leave earlier, but I wouldn't let her. It was my car. Go and wash the lipstick off your face. I hope I've made it perfectly clear. This has nothing to do with Tracy. I want to speak to Miss Hart. Good night, Tracy. Good night. Good night. Come in here. Father Layton told you that I wanted you to return. Yes, he did. But you preferred to stay on and come back at this hour of the morning. If I've made you angry, I'm so sorry. Do you always behave like this? But I haven't done anything. Haven't I've... you any self-respect? I don't know what You're just a cheap little... You better go to your room. Any longer, he'll drive you insane. I'll find rooms for you. No, it was our fault. Look, Tracy, this isn't 1870. You're not 15. What right is he to behave like the Grand Inquisitor? I know why he's angry. He feels he's responsible. 
After all, we might have had a smash or something. It still doesn't excuse that sort of behavior. Why, he's off as nut. You don't understand him. He gets upset, and then he says things he doesn't mean. It's just him. Temperament's a mighty fine excuse for a lot of things. Oh, please don't start all that again. He's very nervy at the moment. He told me he can't sleep. I can't sleep either, since you've come to this house. It doesn't get me any sympathy, though. I'm very sorry for you. You missed a bit of lipstick. Here, yeah, give that back. Franklin, pack your bags and get out. Now. Morning, Johnny. Hello. Any mail? No. Sleep well? I didn't sleep at all, if you want to know. Ah, me. Young love. Johnny, he threw me out last night. Why? What on earth for? Oh, I'm all ears. Ah, oh, he's crazy. I was leaving anyway, but I've been looking everywhere. I can't find a place to live. But why? That's what I want to know. I thought you would. Well, you can go on wanting to know. Oh, that's far worse. I shall begin to think it's something quite unspeakable. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Anybody asking for me? Dr. Forrester. Oh, can't he take no for an answer? Mac used to use it. Why don't you try him? Good idea. Thanks, Tony. Mac, I want to ask you something. Way, man, I'm busy. It's a matter of life and death. Have you still got some polisol? Polisol? What do you want it for? Oh, I don't want it. He wants it. Well, it's not made here. It was made by I.G. Farben, the German chemist, from a herb which is only found growing in the Baltic regions. It hasn't been coming over here since, oh, since 1939. That's funny. He said he's always used it. Used it quite recently. I wonder where he got it from. Probably using pre-war stocks. In Australia, more than likely, they'd have bought their stocks in bulk. I wonder. Here, I'll tell you what. Take him some Rontasol, label it Polisol, and see if he knows the difference, eh? <laughs> He's not much good at practical jokes. Uh, you take him too seriously. I can't take him at all. He can't eat you. You take a tip from a canny old Scot. You may not love him dearly, none of us do, but you can learn from him. He knows what he's doing. Johnny's got some Rontasol in stores, ask her. Okay, Mac, thanks. You wanted some polisol. Oh, you got some. Good. Any difficulty? I tried everywhere. And you know, there are some here all the time in stores. There you are, you see. I told you. Nothing's impossible. No. That's what Max said. Oh, Rankin. There's something I want to make clear to you. Yes? I never allow anything that happens in private to affect my professional work. My relationship with you here will not be influenced by what happened last night. I expect the same from you. I'm responsible for Miss Hart. Also, you both have work to do. I don't want that work taking second place to emotional stress with either of you. I think, for a time, at any rate, I'd rather you didn't see her. Is that how Tracy feels, too? I haven't consulted her. Excuse me, is this Dr. Forrester's house? Yes. Is Dr. Forrester in by any time? No, the doctor's at work. Then I wonder if you'd mind giving him this letter on his return. I was passing and I thought I'd save a stamp. Uh, who shall I say to us, please? Mrs. Coles, an old friend of Dr. Forrester's from Melbourne. I want him to have tea with me. We'll have so much to talk about. Yes, I'll tell the doctor. Thank you so much. For you. Thanks. Hello. Tracy? Yes. Yes, it was all right. I'll tell you later. No. No, nothing. Are you alone now? Good. I'll come right over. How about? It? I'm out if anybody wants me. I'm sure she does. Neutral. You asked for Dr. Forrester. Thank you, sister. Where's Dr. Rankin? Oh, he's gone out. 
Gone out this time of the morning? I believe something about looking for a room. As soon as he comes back, send him here. Yes, Dr. Forrest. Hello. Hello, darling. I'm so glad to see you. Where did you sleep? Well, never mind about that now. I've only got a few minutes. He must know I've been here. What did he say? And that doesn't matter either. I have something more serious. What? It's about him. Again? Yes, again. What's the use? You don't like him and you're prejudiced. Well, you're the one who's prejudiced. All right, let's get it over. There are certain things I don't understand, and I don't like them very much. What, for example? Only little things, and I know what you're going to say, but they still add up. All right, get on with your adding. First of all, he said he was a shocking golfer, but a scorecard of his states that his handicap is scratch. That makes him a liar for a start. If you want to know he is a scratch golfer or was. Then why lie? Oh, for heaven's sake. He's working like a slave. He doesn't want to play golf at the moment. Now, what else have you got against him? On his trunk, there's a label of the Golf Face Hotel in Colombo. But you yourself heard him say that he'd never been to Salon in his life. I see. So without being man enough to ask Dr. Forrester to his face to solve this incriminating enigma, for which is probably some simple explanation. You poison yourself with stupid doubts and suspicions, but suspicions of what? Tracy, for your own sake, you've got to believe that I'm not being petty and suspicious for nothing. Today, I asked Mac about a drug called Polisol. Forrester claims he used it all during the war. I find it's only made in Germany. In that case, where did he get it? Or was he in Germany himself? Paul, what on earth are you saying? Was he ever in Australia? No, go far. This is getting beyond a joke. I agree, far beyond a joke, but you can't prove I'm wrong. Well, can you prove you're right? I think there is proof. But where? That cabin trunk in the lab. There's something inside, and I'm going to find out what. But you can't go through his personal belongings. Supposing he is a fake. Why should he be a fake? All right, then. If he's on the level, by opening the trunk, I'll get the poison out of my system. Well, in that case, you better open the trunk. Good. Come on, then. How are you going to open it? I borrowed a bunch of keys. What of them may fit. What if he finds out that we sneaked down here and did this? He won't. body and experience in osteopathy. <laughs> Doctors don't believe it. <laughs> All right, I apologize. <laughs> well, I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> What's he want to keep books in a trunk for, anyway? <laughs> He's a tidy person. Doesn't like junk. I've never seen these books in this house before. I suppose they came by submarine from Germany. <laughs> no. They came from Jessen's second-hand booksellers in Oxford. There's the label. For heaven's sake, are you trying to start another mystery? This trunk was just as heavy when he came. What was in it then? That's what I'd like to know. Can't you stop trying to prove a black is white and take something on trust for once? For your own sake. Look. Brilliant people like Dr. Forrester are sometimes eccentric. Oh, I'll admit he's clever. Be generous, then. Make allowances for things which you think are odd. All right. But there are limits, you know. When it comes to trying to stop a fellow from seeing his girl, it's going a bit too far. Is that what he said? Yes, this morning. When do we meet? Half the near this evening. First chance I get. Sure. Good. My brush. So this is Mrs. Coles. Not Bowles. Coles. Can I speak to Dr. Forrester, please? I'm sorry, Dr. Forrester's not at home. Oh, he's late. Will you tell him I telephoned? I'll try again later. Yes, I'll tell the doctor. The name's Mrs. Coles. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Mrs. Coles, friend of Dr. Forrester's, is telephoned. 
What did you say? Well, I said you were out. This morning she came here to the house, left this note. Who is she? I don't know. Well, what are you going to do? Don't know yet. You must do something. Yes. Dr. Forrester, they're all alive, all six, and kicking. Good. I'll have a look at them. By the way, Mrs. Coles, you know, the woman from Melbourne. Oh, yes. She's written to ask us for tea next Sunday. Are we going? No. Do me a favor, Tracy. Ring her up and make an excuse. She's such a bore. This makes 30 which have been immunized and infected and still survive. It's wonderful. Tracy, tonight I must speak to you of something. Yes? We have reached the final stage. We have found a vaccine which 30 times out of 30 has immunized a rodent. The time has come when we must make the same test on the human body. Yes, I know. If successful, it means that our country, after immunization of the people, will be safe. To other countries, this bacteria means certain death. Pray God it'll never be used. The way that we, you and I, must look at it is that if it's true that I found an effective vaccine, then we have served humanity. If I could lend my own body for this last test, I would. Gladly and proudly. I'll do it for you. Tomorrow I shall vaccinate you. About ten days later I shall infect you. If you resist the disease, we've won a great victory. If you don't, and I want you to realize that you may not. May I ask you something? Yes, what is it? Before you infect me, I want to see Paul. Are you in love with him? Yes. You won't be able to see me. Then I swear to you, I know what I want. Please, be patient with me. No, I must see you. No, darling, you won't see me. Try to understand. But I've got to see you. No, Paul, no. Give me time. Please. For a day or two, you'll feel perfectly well. Then you may feel very sorry for yourself. That will mean the fight is on, and we're going to win. Dr. Rankin is on the telephone for Miss Tracy. All right. 
Go on, go and speak to him. But he mustn't come round here. Thank you. Tracy, I try to understand you. And heaven knows I have the patience of Job, but it just doesn't make sense. Well, are you all right? Good, then why can't I see you? Did you say it was Dr. Rankin who wished to speak to her? I see. Well, will you please ask Miss Hart to phone me? Do you mean to say she's so busy she can't spare one minute to speak on the telephone? Well, frankly, I don't believe you. something to help her through. No. But she could die any minute. If you help her, this experiment will prove nothing. Leave her. But, but I must speak to her. Well, why can't I speak to her? Have you asked her? What? You said she's not well. Well, what's wrong? Hello? Hello. Hello. I'd like to see Miss Hart, please. I'm afraid that's not possible. Miss Tracy's in bed. I want to see her just the same. But Miss Tracy's not well. I know that. I want to see her. Please tell her I'm here. Please wait. Miss Tracy sends her regards, but she doesn't wish to see you tonight. I see. Right. You're doing fine. I'm proud of you. We've won. It's over. She'll be all right. Congratulations. I'd like a glass of champagne. Yes. Tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow, then. Inman will pick you up at 3 o'clock at the entrance to Baker Street Station. You will leave England the same night. Good. That girl, she had courage. Yes. And tomorrow you will kill her. It isn't necessary. If I kill her, we take a stupid risk. They'll know too soon. Your orders are to kill slowly, to infect her. What rubbish they talk, these people who give orders. Herr Dr. Bruckner, I'm here to see that no evidence is left. The girl knows what you know. She's watched your work. Nonsense. No, not nonsense. She's intelligent. She knows more than you think. 
Inspector Doctor, you will not leave England until this order is obeyed. You will not argue with me. You will kill the girl. Well, Dr. Bruckner, what is your answer? Yes, I'll kill her. Good. I shall remain here until I'm sure. in her bedroom. I'm going up now. While I'm with her, start killing the rodents. I don't want anything left alive. Something else I never told you. What? I've loved you, but you never knew. I wanted you. It's all right. It makes no difference now. I wanted to say it to you. Today, now. I have some meetings in London. I want you to take it easy for two or three days. And don't leave the house. You're not strong enough yet. There's nothing for you to do. The rodents have been destroyed. Just rest. And don't see anyone. Stay until you... No, no, no. I'll be perfectly all right. Are you quite sure? Yes. 
Goodbye. Have a nice time. Goodbye. One day you'll know how much you helped me. Gillington 838, please. Hello. Tracy? How are you feeling? Good. Gone? Where to? Well, didn't he say when he was coming back? Oh. Yes, all right, I'll come now. Your lucky day, Doctor. Johnny, did... Did Forrester say anything to you about going away today? Yes, he rang through about an hour ago. It's funny he didn't tell me. Oh, perhaps he'll apologize when he gets back. Don't look so wildly happy. <laughs> Supposing he doesn't come back. Ah, uh -huh. what are you up to? Golf? Well, today he had an urgent analysis. Tomorrow he's got that important test for the ministry. If the ministry can wait. It must be used to it by now. Why should you worry? And Tracy's been mysteriously ill. Illnesses are always mysterious. If they weren't, we'd all be out of a job. And that's not the only thing. He's a liar, he's got a trunk I swear he doesn't own, and he uses German drugs. I know, he's a spy. Now, look, Paul, you'd better be careful. It's a nasty thing, slander. All right, it's slander, but I still say he's a phony. Hello, stranger. Hello, darling. Well, let's have a look at you. Hey, you look awful. I know. <laughs> Do you have to tell me? What's been wrong? Nothing much. Anyway, I'm all right now. I want to know what was wrong. Why were you ill? It was nothing. By the way, where's that Czech woman or whatever she says she is? She's gone. Gone? Gone where? Well, I don't know. She just left this morning. So they're both gone. Are you starting another mystery? Look, Tracy, you knew you were going to be ill, didn't you? I didn't know there was going to be an inquest. But you knew. Paul, if you want to start this all over again, why don't you go somewhere else? I wish I could. I wish I knew someone. Well, as always, Mrs. Coles should be highly delighted, I'm sure. You are right. I will. Paul! See you later. Oh, good morning, Dr. Rankin. I must be looking simply frightful. You caught me Mr. quite Coles, in this. this is most important. You remember Tracy Hart? Of course, a charming girl and so pretty. Staying with Dr. Forrester from Melbourne. They're coming to tea with me so I can meet him again. But you did meet him. No, I was very disappointed. He had to put me off several times. He's so busy. But I saw you talking to him at the dance. You were sitting with him. Don't you remember at the golf club dance? I do remember, but that wasn't Dr. Forrester. He was also very charming. It was Dr. Forrester of Melbourne. No, 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 no. I'm never likely to forget Dr. Richard Forrester. I remember the first time I was introduced to him. He took one look Excuse at me, me and said... Excuse me, but may I use your telephone? Oh, of course, if you must. I must call the police. The police? Yes, the police. Miss Hart, I want you to give me a full description of this man. His dark hair and blue eyes. Height about five foot eight. Now this aerosol bomb or germ container, what does it look like? It was a small metal cylinder. About the size of a DDT spray. Do you know what was in it? Yes. Culture of plague. Did he say anything about it? He said if it was blocked and broken in a crowded place, 80% of the people within 100 yards could be infected. Most of them would die. Did he say anything else? He said they wouldn't see the virus or smell it or taste it, but in about three days' time, symptoms would appear. And you're quite certain this germ bomb wasn't left downstairs in the lab? Yes, yes, I'm quite certain. Well, I think that's all. Thank you, Miss Hart. Good day. Good day.
go on to say it. See, I told you so. Cheer up. <laughs> You're not the only monk, you know. I nearly wrote to the BMJ about a cure for the common cold. <laughs> Last seen wearing a grey chalk striped suit. Soft gray trilby hat, red tie, striped shirt, and black shoes. And probably carrying a small brown leather suitcase and gray overcoat. End of message. with large crowds until nightfall. Cover all crowded areas. Check all sports stadiums. I must see Professor Inman. I'm very sorry, sir. Professor Inman left London about two hours ago. Did he say where he was going? No, sir. He just packed his bags and left. He seemed pressed for time, sir. Right. I repeat, an aerosol bomb containing plague back... Description reported Baker Street. Check northwest area. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Lucas left London an hour ago. Expect him back. He said, not for some time, sir. This man is dangerous. He is probably armed and will resist... Check White City, Fulham, Stamford Bridge. Check White City, Fulham, Stamford Bridge. Check West Ham, Leighton, Haringey. Check West Ham, Leighton, Haringey. Where's Inman? Where's Lucas? I don't know. Why did they leave? Look at that. The police are after you, Bruckner. Give me my bag. Will you please go now? So? You think I'll write everything down on bits of paper? You're wrong. It's all here. I'm armed. I'll stand alone against the world. You're in my hands, all of you. Nations will bid for me. The greatest scientist the world ever knew. You'd better go now. I have power. I can destroy. They need me. They can't do without me. You shall see. You shall see. You shall see. <laughs> Here is a special communique from Scotland Yard. Cet homme Bruckner est très dangereux. Méfiez-vous, il se peut qu'il soit armé. Scotland Yard, calling all ships, ports, airports and coast guards. Here 
Gentlemen, sir. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. That sailor. Dutch? Yes, I think so. Ask him if he'll have a drink with me. Let him know that I want to know if he'll have a drink with him. A large whiskey. Oh. Very kind of you. Sailing soon? I think two days. The hook. Proper time. Back soon? In about a couple of weeks. Three, Bob. Thank you. Good head. Want to make some money? What do you want? Dutch gin, bold. <laughs> That's not easy. If you find a way, I'll pay you well. You like Dutch gin? I can use it. Okay, I bring some. Perhaps not much, but I bring some. What's the name of your ship? Van Huysen. Van Huysen. I'll look out for you. Okay. Where does she dock? London Bridge Wharf. All right. In about two weeks? Yes, maybe. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Now, there's no such thing as a harmless rat. <laughs> <laughs> to a good riddance. Oh. 